What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist and I'm joined by Gersh One wearing the Shrek green shirt in another episode of For the Greater Law. Oh, this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because it gets those questions first. That is what Brian B did. He asks, what do you, what do, <laughs> what do? What do you Gilliman's reaction will be if when he meets the clone of Fulgrim? So <laughs> we got think. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so for all those that don't know, Fulgrim, there's two Fulgrims within the Warhammer 40k lore. The first one is, of course, the demon Primar, the badass serpentine creature mm -hmm. that hopefully we'll get next year, yeah, maybe even this year. Maybe. But yeah. So that Fulgrim, and then you have the Glass half foregrown. <laughs> <laughs> so, who was it? Fabius Bile, who mm -hmm. cloned um, Fulgrim. When when the clone of Fulgrim realized that the real Fulgrim betrayed <laughs> the Ember Bird. Yeah, the glass half empty Grum. Yeah. <laughs> he, um... He, of course, was going to fight uh, the other Fulgrim or, or do something about it and bring back his legion. Uh, and then what ended up happening was um, Fabius Bile sold him or traded him to... What's his name? Uh, Trazin the, the Infinite. Infinite. And then he has him in his vaults, just kind of in stasis. Mm -hmm. uh, so if he ever does come back, if the good Fulgrim comes back, which is a clone, um, I think Gilliman would not really respect the clone Fulgrim. And also, I don't think that the clone of a Primarch has ever been a good thing. No. All of the time, they don't compare to the original. They're weaker. Um, they're just flawed in almost every aspect that you can think of. And no, like, Gilliman almost died to Fulgrim. So even if it's like a clone or whatever, I don't think he'd see him as a means to fight chaos or anything like that to him it's an abomination kill him you know this is this is basically a perversion of what the emperor wanted because fabius bile has cloned the perfection that is like the primarchs and it's just like a smack to the face yeah if gw would try to pursue some things uh, along the lines of like uh, Gilliman being sympathetic towards the clone of fulgrim it would kind of kill a lot of um the primarchs lore mm -hmm. and just like you were saying, uh, Primarchs are supposed to um, destroy anything that goes away from the perfection that the Emperor created, and and he would see that as an abom abomination. Yeah, kind of like the same thing between uh, Corvus Corax and his like abomination marines. I mean, yeah, that kind of thing. Sympathy killing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. Next question. This one is by Juan Rams. Can Dora, the Explorer, survive in 40k? She's got a very good chance. For one, she's got boots with her, and that's like almost to the level of Chaos Gods. Um, and I think she can stop anything in her tracks by saying no swiping. Because obviously all the Chaos Gods are going to want her soul. She'll just be like, corn, no swiping. And he'd be like, you got me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you watch the movie? The, no, I, I, didn't, no. I didn't know it was out yet. I think it's already out. Let's end this one real quick because we got somewhere to be. <laughs> Next question comes from Squiggly Line. He asks, During the Siege of Terra, why did the Emperor teleport into Horus's flagship, knowing that the Ultramarines were on their way and that the traitors were in a hurry? Why give Horus the chance to kill him? Uh, it's pretty simple. For the entire duration up to that point of the Siege of Terra, there was a force field around Horus's flagship. Seeing the defenses go down, the Emperor and Sanguinius, they, well, everybody that teleported onto it, they knew that this was their one and only chance to bring the fighting to the end by taking down Horus. So knowing that the defenses are down, go in there, go for a swift attack, end the heresy. Yeah, and of course the Emperor didn't intend to uh, die. <laughs> like, it's not something, because he really thought... Their, their plan was to teleport together mm -hmm. well, as one whole unit. And right. when they actually got onto the flagship, they were scattered um, by the schemes of Horus. Um, so he caught 
he, he first he called uh, Sanguinius and then uh, the Emperor. Also, was Dorn with them too? Yeah, Dorn was also there, but Dorn didn't even show up till like the Emperor got murked. Um, but uh, so up until that point, also uh, the siege of Terra was really successful for the traitors. Uh, There's a lot of death, a lot of killing, and the Emperor's kind of like, well, let's just end it now. Like, yes, the Ultramarines are coming, they're doomed, but we need to take uh, Horus out before he, you know, tries to escape. Because just like the Emperor knew, I'm pretty sure that um, the bad guys also knew that, oh shit, the Space Wolves are coming, the Ultramarines are coming. They weren't the Dark Angels coming too, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, Yeah. And that just goes to show you that, like, the full force of Horus' legions were there, and not, like, all the loyalists were there, and they were still able to kind of repel them. Like, yeah, they were slowly losing. Like, they got to the point of the gates of, uh, the... the Terra. Terra, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's, it's scary. Very scary. Uh, next question comes from Soul Survivor. <laughs> Uh, is that an Akon reference? <laughs> uh, who is the most horrible Inquisitor in 40k that the Inquisition would exile on the grounds of uh, ethics? Oh, ethics. Yes, ethics. I don't think ethics applies to Inquisitors. No. Especially the ones that deal with uh, demon hosts. Mm -hmm. It's like fight fire with fire. Yeah, so there's two different branches. There's mm -hmm. the Puritans and then there are the Radicals. Radicals are going to be the guys that um, would do something chaotic. Uh, they, they think of fighting chaos with chaos which is why they have uh, demon hosts they have like uh they they themselves can use sorceress powers mm -hmm. um or warp powers they they, they try to find like demonic artifacts to use you know for their own purposes yeah. but oftentimes they follow the chaos themselves so <sighs> as far as a name person eisenstein uh, eisenhorn or oh, sorry <sighs> I think Eisenstein is the ship. Yeah, yeah, I keep messing it up. So Eisenhorn is definitely um, one of the guys that, not in the beginning, but at the end, it's like... Spoiler oh, yeah. alert. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> at the end, he kind of like but, I mean, goes at, off the at rails. At this point, like his story has been out for a while. Yeah, it's that's hard like, not to. Yeah, that's like saying, like, oh, you ruined the ending for Lord of the Rings. It's like... Yeah, you know what's going to happen. Yeah. They're going to throw the ring into the thing. Spoiler, Spoiler alert. alert. Um, I was going to say Kryptman, maybe. Uh, Inquisitor Kryptman? Mm -hmm. Because of the Xenos thing? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, again, it's it's, it's wishy-washy. It's a gray area. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from... <laughs> uh, it's Nars. You have a really funny uh, icon. Or is it called thumbnail thing? Okay. The Avi. Avi. <laughs> uh, this is a really long one. I don't want to read it, so I'm moving on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, the rise of the angel. All praise the emperor. Sanguinius spirit spirit partly rests within him on the fortress monastery of Bao, and the other on the vengeful spirit. With the aid of Evrain, I'm guessing this is like your... Take sure it's continuing. This is like your um, what-if scenario. Um, okay, so... So with the aid of Evrain, who has the power of life and death granted to her by the Eldar death god Inead, she proves this in a battle with Ariman by resurrecting a group of thousands of space marines with their memories intact. This actually happened. Though. In takes, oh yeah, and then kills them later. She also helped heal Gilliman um, to his full strength before being mortally wounded by the traitor Primarch Fulgrim. With Chapter Master Dante of the Blood Angels, the Death Company, as its spear, launches a crusade to capture the Vengeful Spirit with the help of Evrain. They can capture Sanguinius' soul within one of the Eldar Soul Shards. They take the shard containing Sanguinius' soul to the Fortress Monastery of Bao, and Evrain could place the soul back into Sanguinius' body and bring him back to full glory. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, that, that seems pretty plausible. Will it happen, though? Because you're already pushing the limits. Well, to begin with, this whole scenario of the Eldar aiding space marines and the xenophobia, that's already, in my opinion, kind of pushing the limits of what space marines would allow. And they allowed a lot. <laughs> and then to make this happen again and again, I understand that 
you know, you're bringing back Sanguinius, which is a great thing. I mean, he should have been dead to begin with. But anyway, this, I feel like they've done it already, so why do it again? Like, if they're going to bring Sanguinius back from his, I don't know, state of, like, suspension, yeah, do it different than what's already been happening with Gilliman. It's like, we've seen this already. Um, you know, Dark El or the Eldar go in, bring, resurrect a Primarch, then the Eldar go in, resurrect another Primarch, like... I understand it's probably the simplest thing, but I feel like there needs to be a different different story, a different campaign to bring back Sanguinius. Yeah, I agree that I hopefully they don't do that, but I think all signs are pointing to yes, they will. Yeah. The more the more we talk about it and the more uh, lore we learn on Sanguinius, the more yeah, it's it's <laughs> becoming obvious that like, oh yeah, it's going to be the same story as Gilliman, just with Sanguinius. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wish it was different, especially because, like, how popular Sanguinius is. Yeah. And it's like, oh, they get saved by the Eldar. Oh, maybe uh, Ferris Manus' head wasn't cut off. Oh, here come the Eldar to save him. Yeah. It's going to become a meme. Um, next question. <laughs> the Mandela bird. Would eating orc flesh be considered vegan? No. Because I think being vegan means you don't take anything from something that's living. And orcs are living. But I mean, vegans eat like plants, plants and fruits and vegetables. Yeah, but they're considered living. No, but plants aren't like they don't show emotion. Sentient. And, yeah, there you go. And and orc definitely shows emotion. He shows anger and rage and no what's. Uh, next question comes from uh, Jay Burr. If Fulgrim and Russ played a 40k game against each other, whose army would they use? Can't choose their own. So Fulgrim is all about perfection. Right now, the most perfect Space Marine army uh, would be some type of Primaris. I haven't even read the um, the, the the Raven Guard, the new Raven Guard. What is it? Raven Guard White Skull. Iron no, Hands. Iron Hands. White Scars. Ultramarines. I think then, it's only four out right now. No, and then the other two. Um, Imperial oh, Fist and, Fist and Salamanders. Salamanders, yeah. yeah. So, whichever one's the best. And then um, Rust would be whatever gets you in close. Uh, so, probably White Scars. What do you think? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, can't argue with his Shrek shirt. Shrek, Shrek. Uh, next question. Oh, this one is by the Mandela Bird. Or once again, blah, 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 blah. Do the Custodes have psychic powers and disciplines? If so, would they be stronger or better than the rest of the Imperium, seeing as how they are Custodes? I feel like... Okay, so you guys have asked this before, and I've never I've never actually like gone into it and, and given the reason why. But no, I don't think um, they have any psychic powers. They're innately psychic, from what I've been reading in the Codex, mm -hmm. but they don't actually manifest their powers as like, Fine bullets! Or warp lightning! But they're they, not great knights. Yeah, they're not great knights, but they, they do have a psychic signature. They're John Hancock, if you will. Uh, next question comes from Brent Thompson. Uh, who else loves Sound Alchemist's face after he cleared a line of speed? I don't think speed is like that, though, right? I don't, I don't know. I don't think you snort speed. I think speed is a pill, ain't it? Speed is a way of mind, mm -hmm. a way of being, a movie with Keanu. Reeves. Uh, next question. Uh, this one's by Alzi Forbes. Which Primarch would you love to go on vacation with? Alpharius. You wouldn't know you're on vacation with him. No, I have a feeling that like if you go with Alpharius, like you have enough people to have a like a nice volleyball game. Hmm. Because there's so many of them. Everybody's Alpharius. That's true. You are gonna end up being Alpharius. Yeesh. Imagine going through, like, <laughs> customs and everything. The line just it keeps going and going and going. What about you? I probably would say Vulcan. Because I feel like, let's say we're going sightseeing and there's, like, a whole bunch of people. He can just, like, pick me up so I can see. Yeah, he is the biggest primer. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are the questions for today. He can pick me up without using his hands. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and those are the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, comment down below. Uh, we have a Patreon. You can support us on Patreon. It's a dollar a month. Uh, we have a Facebook. You can hit us up on Facebook. It's a dollar a month. <laughs> <laughs> you can hit us up on uh, 
Instagram. It's a dollar a month. Grinder. It's a dollar a month. Tinder. It's a dollar a month. <laughs> no, I don't think it is. Um, bye. Dollar a month. <laughs>